My parents are so. Oh. <laughs> Hello. <laughs> Mom. <laughs> I told you I'm recording. What's up, everybody? Welcome on in to the call up. Susanna Collins alongside my sun kissed gal, Jillian Sackovitz. <laughs> it's you, called a selfie ring. You look great. You look great, my friend. Got the fresh highlights in. I mean, you're just living the life in upstate I, New York. You know, like. A, a new woman out in these parts, I, I gotta say. Yeah, I love it. I Probably how you're feeling in the um, outskirts of Chicago. Yeah, that's right. I switched it up. Got uh, got back to uh, the parents' house. Gonna head up to the lake and uh, hopefully get a little, you know, nature into into my veins. New York City was. Um, I mean, I love it. I love Brooklyn. I love New York City. But a, a change of scenery is gonna be it's gonna be really Amen. good and needed. We have we have a really cool show today. We are bringing on Mr. Mr. DC, Bill Hamid. We tried to call Mr. Call no. Bill Hamid Mr. D DC, and he was like, no, that's Ben Olson. So we are talking to Mr. DC, Ben Olson today. He is going to hit on um, you know, his relationship with the city, his relationship with Bruce Arena that goes back years and years. Um, we'll obviously talk about the MLS's back tournament and then also uh, Black Lives Matter and his thoughts on that and what the team has been doing in support of it. So um, it's going to be cool. It's going to be a really, really good chat with he's, him. He's great. He's, I mean, and also learning about kind of how he's an artiste and mm -hmm. uses that as an outlet. It, it's a great show. We are recording this on Monday, June 22nd. So the MLS's back tournament schedule has not been released yet. So we will not be talking about it. Uh, but something that we are talking about today is three things that we are here for. The NWSL Challenge Cup is back. Now, a lot yep. of people are saying MLS is going to be the first team sport to return. No, no, no. No, the, the women people... They are back this Saturday. It is the NWSL Challenge Cup. It kicks off uh, right outside Salt Lake City in Utah. Mm -hmm. It's going to mark, Suze, get this. This is something I didn't know. It's going to mark the first time professional women's club soccer will be seen live on a national broadcast network. So cool. In the United States. So this Saturday, 1230 Eastern, um, the North Carolina Courage taking on the Portland Thorns. Uh, and then for the rest of the tournament, it'll be on all CBS platforms. Mm -hmm. And get this, the semis and the final, as of now, when I was looking at their schedule, it's slated to be played at Rio Tinto, where RSL plays. So okay. we are so pumped. Lady soccer is here in Let's a few days. Let's go. Let's go. No, that's World really... Cup ladies, just mm -hmm. the reigning champs. You'll see them sprinkled throughout the tournament playing with their clubs, obviously. Very, very, very exciting. We cannot wait to watch here that. Here for that. Uh, something else that we are here for. This is just a this is just a feel good story for US soccer, right? What? So we talk about the NWSL coming back. Well, this weekend also saw the return of the Premier League and <laughs> Captain America himself, one Christian Pulisic scored such a special goal for Chelsea. Yeah, um, I mean, it was great. So they were playing Aston Villa. It was a come from behind 2-1 win. And he didn't even start the match, which was, you know, people are all up in arms. Why isn't Christian Pulisic Be patient, fighting? people. Be patient. Exactly. It's but okay. It's he okay. Came, he came into that game, I think, in like the 55th minute. Within four minutes, he was making a difference and found the back of the net and was part. He, he basically ignited that comeback. And then what was so cool, too, every single player in the Premier League this weekend had Black Lives Matter on the back of their jersey. And so you know how many eyeballs were on those matches. We saw Christian Pulisic score a goal. We saw support for Black Lives Matter. I mean, it was it was just a very – it made me feel very positive about – U.S. soccer and I was I gave me all the feels so here for that's that. it was a great initiative to see the Premier League kind of in solidarity with the movement yeah. happening here in the United States but it's you know it's ign using your word ignites ignite it's igniting a lot of people asking questions sure. about their own social and race structures in their own countries um, across the world we've seen our uh, colleague Kaylin Carr talking about the aboriginal people in Australia mm -hmm. even like it has started movements there it's been incredible. So nice to see the Premier League um, kind of getting behind that. For 12 games, 
the players will be having the Black so Lives cool. Matters on the back of their jerseys. And something else in U.S. soccer, Gio Reyna. He had himself a day for Dortmund. He had an assist in their 2-0 two, two win over uh, Tyler Adams' squad, Leipzig. Really? And a very cute photo for those of you um, <laughs> who can find it uh, surfaced of Tyler Adams and Gio Reyna doing a jersey swap. Guys, so future, it's like the future is yes. Right. We will look back on this picture and be like, oh my gosh, remember when? For those of you that don't know Gio Reyna, obviously the son of Claudio Reyna, mm-hmm. um, former epic legendary player and then went on to be the sporting director at nycfc and is now, now at austin. austin yeah yes ma'am look good 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 soccer roots so good this feels one- right yes. we love it we love it okay this is this is very on brand for us this yes. year for this if you see where i'm going with this. I know. so uh we have talked a lot during quarantine about you know, um, the quarantine hair and how, you know, people just haven't had access. We have kind of had to let it go. Jill recently got her hair highlighted and looks fabulous. Uh, Kellen, With a mask on. Kellen Rowe, however, of the New England Revolution. I mean, if you let this guy just went full on Wolverine, the hair, he had like the thick beard growing out. And this weekend he finally shaved it he cut it and then jill went back to platinum he had done that i think was it last season that he did that for a little bit yes he rock when platinum. he was with rsl he had some platinum oh my lord so he is now he, so now he's like freshly clean shaved with the platinum locks and he looks Suze, like he's getting ready for orlando you he know is. he's definitely it's getting hot. ready for orlando so um here here for kellen Rowe, you know just kind of we support you, Kellen. Just keeping it, keeping it nice and nice and clean. Um, good for you. Good for you, Kellen Rowe. Here I want to see some good hair in Orlando, so I'm putting out that challenge. That mm-hmm. can you please like kick it up a notch? You know, give the camera something to look at and give us We're something hearing- to talk yeah. about, <laughs> please. <laughs> and today we welcome our very special guest, the manager of DC United. Ben Olson, when we had Bill Hamid on and he gave us all these tips about where to go in D.C., we said, oh, my God, you're like Mr. Mr. D.C. And he goes, do not call me that. That is Ben Olson. So it turns <laughs> out we've got Mr. D.C. on today in Ben Olson. Ben, how are you? Thank you so much for joining us. Can we call you Mr. D.C.? You're good. Yes. Um, no, Bill, Bill, the, the, the baton has been passed, no doubt, for some of these younger guys. I'm an old man with three kids. I don't know this city as well as I used to. Not even. I don't believe it for a second. Uh, wanted to wish you a, uh, a happy belated Father's Day. Uh, we're recording this Thank on you. Monday. I know you and your wife, Megan, are the parents to, to three adorable kids. Well, how did you spend the day? What did you guys do? Uh, it always starts off great. You know, they're all, <laughs> the kids are all jazzed up and, you know, went and got me a coffee and made me breakfast. And they try to bring me breakfast in bed, but Aww. I always just... just I'm terrible. I'm like, no, I don't want breakfast in bed. I don't like breakfast in bed. It doesn't appeal to me. I'd rather have another half hour of sleep. So uh, <laughs> downstairs, put it in the fridge. No, they're great. Uh, it, they, they get excited. They're they're wonderful ages. They're you know eleven, nine, and uh, five. So those ages when you're a father and, and birthdays and events, they just get so jazzed up. Uh, and uh, I watched a little premiership uh, by myself which was great and i played some tennis i got some exercise uh, took a bike ride it was a great day thanks awesome uh, um you know coaches across the league players everyone's been handling what's been the last 100 plus days of quarantine differently and it's been challenging on so many different levels but for you personally maybe having a player's perspective having such a long standing mls perspective Ben, how did you handle, you know, your team during this time and how challenging was this on your, you know, your list of managerial challenges? And uh, yeah. it, it's been challenging. I think every manager has went about it in different ways and how you maintain your culture uh, when you're not there every day and looking these guys um, in the eyes. Uh, but through technology, I've been amazed at how um, – how well you can still communicate and, uh, you know, still kind of uh, hammer home some of the principles of play and and still further along your identity as a team. Uh, and also even uh, continue your culture. Uh, <clears throat> I, I feel 
I feel like it was a great time because there was no emotion. I've said this plenty of times. There was no emotion to it all other than the experience of COVID and the anxiety with that. There was no wins, losses. There was no, I was benched or I'm, I'm playing. You could really connect to the players uh, in this unemotional state. And I think if you can, if I tried to capture that so that uh, my relationships with the players and the group uh, will be better uh, when we do get back to the volatility of the season, right? Because it's hard. It's hard, yeah. hard to have a 1v1 uh, after a loss and, and uh, stay even keel. And so that, that part I, I really found enjoyable. And uh, But, you know, we'll see. We'll see if I did a good job or not. <laughs> we, we will see. We're going to see pretty darn soon. We are um, at this point just, just over two weeks away from the MLS's back tournament. Down in Orlando, the guys have returned to training. As you as you kind of mentally prepare for what that next sort of month and change is going is going to look like, what are some of the what are some of the feelings? How are you preparing uh, from a mental standpoint for for what's ahead in this tournament in Orlando? It's difficult to prepare for for this this challenge ahead, and, and because it's so unique. And we're all going through this for the first time. And we're all going through the last three months for the first time. And then this isolation camp where you have three games in a World Cup format. Uh, so there's just so many new layers to this. Uh, it, it's exciting. It really is. It's a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity if you can kind of switch your brain into that mode and to kind of be contagious in that as a leader and, and make sure these guys understand the opportunity that we have. Uh, because it's so easy right now to slip into the negative, right? Uh, and uh, hopefully, I, I think by and large, our players are excited about it. Of course, there's anxiety to going to a hotel and being under lockdown and, and staying somewhere for for a month. That's that's uh, human nature. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, it's an opportunity, and, and we want to do well. Uh, we have a, a short amount of time, very short. We've had a, a tough time getting up and running with training because of DC. The, uh, the situation here, mm -hmm. uh, and we've had a, a, a positive t test or two, so that's halted us. Uh, so we have a lot of work to do in a short amount of time, but the, the players seem engaged, and well, it, it's been really nice to get back on the field with them. And when you get back on the field, D.C. United will be in Group C, along with Montreal, Toronto, and New England. Uh, what was your reaction to the draw? Did you care who you were going up against? And then when you try to evaluate who you're going up against, do you look at the first two weeks of the season or what you saw from those teams in your own? Does that kind of go out the window? You know, I think you after the first couple of weeks after, uh, you know, into the, the quarantine, I think you were, you know, I was pretty focused on those two games and analyzing uh, who we were and where we're going to go. But that's a long time to dwell on those two games. A hundred days ago. Right. <laughs> so, you know, you can only watch that game tape so many times. <laughs> and they weren't that great. So I wasn't certainly going to watch it that many times. Uh, so, you know, yeah, you learn from that. Uh, we were in transition anyways. We have a lot of new players, in particular in the attack, which is super abstract. And it takes a lot of time for those guys to start clicking. So really, we, we need reps and we need games to still figure out who we are in the attack. Um, and uh, ironically, after that second game, we were going to tweak, uh, tweak the team up and uh, we were going to move some players around in different positions and try something new. Uh, so, uh, you know, it's, uh, we'll see. It's going to be not a perfect uh, – there's, there's not a lot of perfection in this. Teams are going to be tired. There's going to be mistakes – uh, but that's also opportunity. If if you can, uh, you know, have the right motivation here, uh, get a couple lucky bounces, and and give your team the right structure and framework, you know, and, and things go your way, you can uh, you can be successful uh, in a tournament like this. Anything can happen. Literally anything can anything. happen. It's crazy. So Jillian mentioned uh, that New England is in the the group uh, with DC United and. Uh, one of the things that I love discovering about you when I first started at MLS was your your deep history that you have with Bruce Arena, uh, <laughs> who coached you as a as a teenager, coached you in college. What is your? I mean, you, you've known him for the better part of your life. How? What is your relationship with like 
like with him and how big of an influence has he had on your career as a coach and a player? Every coach that I've ever uh, kind of uh, uh, crossed paths with across my life, I've taken a little something from them, even high school coaches. Um, but, you know, when I do say, okay, you know, which coach has had the most influence on me is, is not only from a, a coaching standpoint, but also uh, in a parental way and, and guiding me in, in life, it would be Bruce. Uh, he's a he's a wonderful guy, uh, beyond loyal, uh, funny as can be, and I just uh, you know I, 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 he just always got the best out of me as a player and and as a person in a lot of ways. So um, you know it, my relationship with him now is it, it's changed, right? It was more parental, uh, and then you, you almost are a peer with Bruce, but never really a peer with Bruce. <laughs> You know, uh, and but he still, you know, I think he still uh, cherishes our relationship and, and not just me, anybody that has crossed his path and has played for him or worked for him. He's one of the most loyal people that you'll ever meet. Uh, and that's a, a, a trait I always admire in people. And I, I try to have that same type of loyalty with, with my players and, and coaching staff. And so he's a, he's a neat guy. It's fascinating and super smart and, you could tell what he's already done with New England uh, in a short amount of time, his ability to get a team on the same page, buy into what he's selling uh, and uh, in, in an enjoyable way. People, players really enjoy playing for him. It's so hard, Ben, when you think about D.C. United, you know, as we mentioned at the top of this show that, you know, you think Ben Olsen first, um, you know, you went to the team. In 98, um, the rest is pretty much history. Rookie of the or you went in 97, then the rest is really history. Rookie of the year 98, Porter Shield winners, MLS Cup champions. You were there for the duration of your playing career until you retired in 2009. You don't see that in MLS anymore. You don't really see that in sports anymore. One player, their entire career. Mm -hmm. What was it about DC United that made you want to stay and then also make it a part of your post player life? Well, yeah, to go back to your original, I, you know, I, I when when I hear DC United, I'm certainly not the one I I don't think of myself. Um, I I was very, very lucky when I first came to this club to be uh, this small little piece in this unbelievable squad. So who do you think of? I think of I, I think of the early days, the, mm -hmm. the guys I think of Marco, I think of Jaime, John yeah. Hart, Eddie Pope, um, you know, Richie Williams, uh, Jeff Agus. These are the guys that shaped me, and I was so lucky and so fortunate to get into this team and be a sponge and with all these super highly competitive players uh, that were playing at the top of their game and to just be a, a part of that and to see this winning culture and, and to be, uh, you know, to for Bruce also bringing me along within that group and not putting me aside and giving me a chance to play with these great players. Uh, it really set a great tone for me for the rest of my career and how to go about winning uh, and how to create a, a, a winning culture and what type of players ultimately you want to be on the field with uh, when it when it comes to holding trophies. And, uh, you know, and then the coaching part, it just happened. I didn't want to be a coach. I was crazy. <laughs> you didn't want um, to be a coach. I didn't want anything to do with being a coach, but oh, it, it was a uh, – there was a job opportunity. I had to kind of retire. My ankles were, were done. You know, mm -hmm. I was running on 10, 11 surgeries on the ankles and I, I couldn't go downstairs anymore. And uh, they nudged me into retirement a little bit. And, uh, and by nudging them, they offered me a job as assistant coach. And it was just a job. It was just to maybe get, take a quick look at coaching and, and what does this have to offer? But at that point I didn't want to be a head coach. Uh, and then six months later, I uh, found myself in the job and uh, it was, a, it was a tough couple of years. I was not ready. My, my foundation to be a leader was, uh, it, it wasn't good enough. And it, I don't recommend that type of learning on the job for many people. Uh, but uh, as, as I grew in it, uh, I, I feel comfortable with who I am as a manager and a, a leader. And I'm, I'm very, very fortunate to still be standing. I had, look, I, I got some mulligans. I've had a few seasons, you know, one or two seasons where, you know, I probably shouldn't be standing here. 
but you know, one maybe because I was, uh, you know, a club legend. They gave me a mulligan there, and my timing was good. That you know, most years after I uh, had a, a poor year, we responded and had. So there's a whole bunch of different reasons why I'm still around, but. <laughs> Can, and we're so we can all relate to that on some level around. with our job. I, well, it's um, it's interesting because coaching it can be such a it's such a volatile role, right? When things are going well, you're the hero, and then when things start to not go well, it's usually the coach that is the the first target. You know, the first one that people look at in in terms of like who's to blame. And it almost never so, ends well, and right? It, yeah, it's just like and. And I'm just wondering, because of your 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 history, and you are so ingrained with this club, with DC United, have you ever considered, have you ever had a desire to coach anywhere else? Uh, n- no, because I've never been in that situation. Um, you know, it will end well at DC United for me. Um, if I'm fired tomorrow morning, um, you know, I've done – everything in my power to help this club. Uh, and I feel, you know, I feel at ease with that and and my time will come. It could be this year. It could be next year. And again, that will be, that will be fine. I, I plan to coach as long as possible for this club. I'm so invested in it. Um, I'm humbled to have, you know, been a part of this club for I mean, 20 years. That's, that's crazy. It doesn't happen a lot. And I, it, it's, it's not lost on me, uh, the responsibility that, that the fans um, the fans want a cup and, uh, but yeah, I don't know. I don't know how it all worked out, but <laughs> it's incredible though. And I love what you said about no matter what happens, like it'll end well yeah. for you. Cause what obviously you've accomplished there and to be so beloved in the city is really not something most people get to experience. Um, something else that people may not know about you is you are an artist. We chatted a little bit about that with you before we hopped on here. Uh, you have a studio in DC. How did that start? How often do you paint? And uh, who's kind of your inspiration? Where did you get it? Does it run in your family? I know we were talking a little bit about, for our listeners, you can't see it, but for those watching, um, Ben has a really interesting painting behind him. Yeah, you know, my I grew up with the arts on my father's side, uh, designers and inventors and painters. So I was always exposed to it at an early age, and I, it was always in me and with art classes. Uh, but it really didn't come out until I started getting injured as a player and needed that release. You know, I was uh, a little bottled up, couldn't run. So I found that release uh, of painting and the arts to be a good release for me and keeping me sane. So, uh, you know, the couple of years ago, I, I took it to the next level and got myself a space because there was paint all over the house and my, <laughs> tired of me painting indoors. And uh, yeah, it's been, it's been, uh, it's been wonderful. You know, I, I'm not a coach that locks myself at Audi field to one in the morning and mm-hmm. sleep on the couch. It, it's, it's not about that with me. And, you know, I have to be in the right mind space uh, so that others around me are in, in the right mind space to succeed. I put a lot of um, uh, stock in who uh, the people that work for me and, and players, they feel engaged in a part of the process because I give them a lot of responsibility. Um, and in order for me to do that, uh, I have to be in, in the right frame of mind and painting helps in that way. And during this time, uh, I've had a lot of time to paint. You know? <laughs> it's, it's just what it was. And it's been fascinating because, you know, you put a couple hours in in the morning uh, and then the afternoons, you know, you, you start to run out of things to do and you're able to sneak away and get an hour or two at the studio. And uh, it's it's been a very productive time in that way for me uh, to work on my kind of hobby. Uh, but it's, uh, but yeah, it's been great. We should have done yeah. recording from the studio, Suze. I know, I know. We should have put in a special request yeah, to see yeah. some of the the Ben Olsen originals. Who well, are some of your... Or we'll do a live one from the studio, right? Yes. There you go. Right. I'm, still, are... I'm, I'm back now. I'm not painting, you know, once, uh, once two weeks ago hit that my painting time got cut. Yeah, then exactly. It, back at it. it. It's amazing um, how quickly you get consumed and, you know, once you get back to work and uh, it's, it's hard to sneak away. Well, I think it's, but I, to your point, I think it's really, it's really important to have that sort of, you know, release and creative release because, you know, if it's just, if it's all soccer all the time, you know, it can just get, <laughs> yeah. can get too, much for, too about, much for everybody. Yeah. I used to not talk about it. Hiding. Mm-hmm. People, people don't want their head coaches to 
really paint. <laughs> you I know, do. in general, I, I think in general, it's not. You know, I, I you know, I, I think people want obsession in, in in their head coaches, and I have that, believe me. Uh, but you can also uh, you you can also do other things in life. I think it's really cool. Who are uh, some of your artistic inspirations that you have? Uh, yeah, you know, uh, my my grandfather is one of them. I mean, he, that's he, cool. You know, he really uh, is an inspiration, and uh, there's plenty of plenty of artists out there that I follow, and it's um, it's uh, you know, Jared Richter, um, you know, a lot of the old American artists. Uh, turn of the century stuff I love. I, you know, I still love the pop art time. Mm-hmm. And uh, there's just so much good stuff out there. Instagram actually is a wonderful place to kind of follow artists and, and, and keep the ideas moving. Well, Ben, one of the things we wanted to, to hit on as well with you is the Black Lives Matter movement and what has been going on in this country, what you have been witnessing firsthand in DC, the nation's capital. And one of the things that we saw um, that was, you know, just really powerful were the players for DC United painting on the field at Audi Field, I Can't Breathe, BLM. I get goosebumps even uh, uh, talking about that. Uh, What... (sighs) Why was that? Why was that so important for them to show solidarity? And you know what was going through your mind as you saw your guys, you know, taking the lead in that way. Sure, it, you know, it, Jason Levian and, and I think a few players really, you know, that should get the credit for for that and coming up with the idea and then offering it out to you know, the, our, our community, right? Whether it's the players and the staff and their families and some of the supporter groups and Loudoun United. Um, and for the, the, the turnout was amazing. Yeah. We ended up doing it and it took a couple of hours. I mean, that's a lot of work, but there were so many people. Uh, and to see uh, every race there, every age, uh, and again, I'm so proud of this team and it, it means so much to me to see that um, all taking place at Audi Field. Uh, it was a special day. Uh, and, 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 I, and I'm proud of the, the way our club has gone about this uh, up to this point and the Black Lives Matter and how uh, whether it was Juneteenth or some of the conversations we've had with players uh, on the website. Uh, but a lot of these, and I just had this conversation with Earl Edwards, uh, who is a, a really sharp guy, and, and uh, I, that's where I've been spending most of my uh, time with a lot of this, is having real conversations and sometimes uncomfortable conversations with some of our players uh, about it. Um, and, uh, you know, it's, you know, we can, we can check boxes, right? A guy like me, I can put it on Instagram and I can put the banners up and, um, you know, checking all the boxes to make sure we're doing what we can for the cause, but there's always more. And so I, I'm, I'm thinking constantly, what can I do after all this, right? Mm-hmm. What can I do with my children? What can I do with my organization and my team? And, and how can I help um, keep this energy going? And I think there's, you know, he, he was discussing a lot about the Black Coalition. I think it's just so important uh, for, for them to uh, keep pushing this and keep keep making sure it's in everybody's face as much as possible uh, and, and not to let this thing lose any steam because it's it's so vital. And, and I think a lot of us, our eyes are uh, open a little bit more uh, and uh, just have a little bit more of an awareness as much as we can uh, about what's going on with the with the racism in our country and police brutality. And it's a. Uh, it's a, it's just a fascinating time, and I'm I'm very optimistic and hopeful that uh, we're uh, uh, we're moving in the right direction. That's it's incredible to see, and especially being in the nation's capital, it gives you a perspective times ten. And I think also having young kids right now is huge because everyone you see out there is, is young, and it's been really inspirational. But Ben, just before we let you go, you mentioned keeping the conversation going. Um, what has been the way you've talked to your players and what do you think is the best way that MLS can make sure that 
when so many eyes are going to be on American, North American soccer in two weeks, um, how do we get it right? Well, yeah, I, I, I think, again, that's my, my instincts too, are like now, like let's get it, let's do it and keep going. And, and But I think it's, it's bigger than that and it's longer than that and it's still going to take these uh, steps throughout the next, you know, for, forever. Uh, and that I don't know if there's one thing we can do it at, at Orlando. Again, I think this Black Coalition is a huge uh, step in the right direction because I think a lot of people also need guidance in these times. And uh, from speaking to, to our players, there are some great ideas that we're going to find out about what they're thinking and, and how they're going to go about uh, moving this, this, this movement forward and, and they're pla- using their platform to making sure that uh, we don't go backwards and we keep this in the front of our minds and, and we make better choices whether it's in our daily lives, uh, with, with the police situations, or in our organizations, yeah. uh, and how we hire, and, and uh, where our empathy is, and, and how we understand a little bit more uh, about the Black community that, frankly, we haven't done good enough with. It's on all of us. It is absolutely on all of us, and it's our responsibility. Uh, ben, we can't thank you enough for your time, for your wisdom, for your insight, for, uh, you know, letting us in and uh dc is is so lucky to to have you oh, and uh, we we hope you're we hope you're coaching there for a whole <laughs> long time because we sure love talking to you well, i appreciate so you too and all the job you're doing you're doing a great job so we'll talk soon anytime 